do the tweet really quick here. Um, let me know if anybody shows up. We have to restart it. It'll probably take a day. Also, we should probably turn off the MC because that's the only thing. Say C. idea what YouTube is doing making all this like so difficult. Why does it keep wanting me to show the like phone desktop? Who would ever want to do that? Is anybody in there yet? Hello, if anybody's in there, I'll be right with you in just a second. Dun, 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 dun. Gonna put out the Discord notice. Another rough start to a live stream. That is all I can say. Another very rough start to a live stream. They are always like that. Continue without fail, which sucks. $2,000 power bill? Yeah, you know, I don't think it'll be quite that bad. We have ran quite a bit of this juice before, and 600 bucks was the worst that we got. But if we had more expensive electric, like 30 cents, yeah, I definitely could see us being there. All right, everybody, so today we're going to do a couple of tasks around here. I'm going to get some feedback on some networking stuff. Uh, we're definitely going to be getting the last JBot up. We're going to blank this. We're going to finish doing some of the networking stuff that we've got over there. And I think we might even get to the point, maybe, where we're actually powering things up. I don't know if we're going to get there or not, but maybe. Uh, could happen. We'll see. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is thank you everybody for all of the support on the channel. Really appreciate it. These things have been absolutely monsters to get in here. They are incredibly heavy and they definitely hold a lot of discs. That's 60 per each additional one. So that's 60 discs per JBOD and that is quite a lot of JBODs in there. Now I'm a little bit concerned, talking about $2,000 electric bills, with how much electric these are actually going to use. So looking online, it looks like they're right around 1,000 watts for 60 drives. That is a little bit higher than I was hoping for. So I'm going to have to get some measurements. That's also running in high performance mode with all the disks spinning in kind of a uh, RAID array. That's what the intention was originally for the DE6600. So a Chia workload may be a little bit lighter on them, so they may not utilize quite as much. Also, these are not going to be using, you know, necessarily the most energy intensive 10k or 15k uh, kind of drives. These are just going to be using 7200 speed RPM drives. Let's take a look around the back of it so I can show you some of the updates on what's going on. So I got some trim in, got the monitor in there. That's one of the Grafana dashboards here. And this is eventually going to monitor a lot of the stack and probably have it on like a rotation so it goes through the different machines as it's doing that. This one over here, I plan on having Macanarish usually running or watching TV, something like that. Uh, let's go around to the back here. Watch out for all that stuff. We're on the third attempt here at getting the rack plan. I think this time we're going to have it. So I've got most of the cable management put in, into place here. I've got a ton of the work done on the back ends of this. These guys, I would definitely say, 
if you're looking at getting J-Bods, I would avoid these. Uh, they are very, very, you know, picky about a lot of things. There's a lot of mechanical, like, this and that that has to be just minorly adjusted to make it work. And they are razor sharp, so you will cut yourself like crazy. I've had, I don't even know, many, many uh, cuts on myself doing this. So this has been one of the things that I would say, if you're looking at getting some J-Bods, be a little bit careful if you're going to go with these particular ones. I think some of the top loaders are actually going to be much more user-friendly than these guys have been. So I did also get the door in here. I haven't trimmed around this side of the door, but I did get a handle on it and it closes very nicely. So I feel good about that. I have always had a hard time installing doors. So it's always nice if you get something right the first time. All right, so let's get started. I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna start by taking some of these trip hazards and putting them in the back here. And these are the EMM controllers for these. You can go around the other side if you want. So these have the InfiniBand, which is what we're going to be using. I already tried the fiber channel, could not get fiber channel to work on these at all. And you can daisy chain off your SAS expansion off the back of this. And then they've got the power supplies that fit up on the side. Another option is you can get the SAS controller cards here and turn this into just a SAS normal 8088 driven machine. Uh, and that's essentially very much like a Dell uh, MD3060E. So at least the weather is doing good here, and it hasn't been horrible as far as temperatures. I hope everybody's having a good time blocking like crazy. Yeah. having a good prime day also. I got some lapel mics that are coming in. So hopefully the audio quality gets a lot better as a result of that. So we should be able to have the audio being recorded on me and they're wireless. So it should follow me around. Damn, putting these in upside down. And each one of these units is rather heavy. So I made sure to check the weight rating of the rack each one of these width discs will be right around 240 pounds. And the rack does have a rating that should support that. So I feel good about that. 2,500 pounds is the static load rating for this rack. I also put these up here. This is gonna be cool. So these are like mono price sells these for 10 bucks. And if you have a rack, these are really cool because you can run cables through them from another you know, location kind of like up and over and then down through these cable management arms. So I'll have the like uh, InfiniBand connections running over this and then down to each one of these. So I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, and I got one over there also and all the networking, including the Inf InfiniBand switch is gonna be over in that bay as well. Looks like it's missing its plate. And I've had a series of these that have had various issues. So definitely another reason that I would not recommend getting these is they're very fragile, the trays. I didn't realize this when I you know, started, but I definitely realize it now. These trays are not very robust. So they have a tendency to warp or to bend. They've got a lot of plastic. 
they've got one critical side little slidey thing. And if that thing is bent at all, or if it doesn't operate just perfectly, it's all sorts of bad, unfortunately. So definitely not going to be as power efficient on these as the DS4246, which I've measured down to 190 watts if you're using a certain type of power supply. The kind of more generic older power supply was usually around 210. So 20 watts is actually a fair amount. So 190, 195 is where that seems to idle at if you have the better power supplies. And that's something that we'll definitely be putting out in a video soon. And one of my thoughts was I could run these without both of the controller cards, but I already tested that out and it definitely will not lower the ramp up on the fans if you're just trying it with uh, one of them. So you do have to keep both of them installed, which sucks. And so it's kind of crazy that we've gotten this far. It has been a little bit over a month now since we started this whole project. I've been, I would estimate, putting three to four hours a day, almost every day, into it. And that has got us here, which feels good. Uh, missing that power supply. Hmm. All right, well, we'll find that power supply eventually. Let's go and get some of the networking tossed in here. Let's check in real quick and see how everybody's doing. Six hundred is the whole house and their home lab for a month. Awesome props. Uh, keep up the good work. Hey, I just do whatever, man. And like. We bought Gov deals and like, I think that was the crazy train right there. I didn't realize it was the crazy train at the time, but buying the Gov deals lot was the crazy train. These quad sockets definitely, I mean, when they're on, they're producing Chia plots or they're doing a large workload. So, I mean, 192 threads, each one of them uh, on the R930s, the R920s, I think are 92s or 96 threads. Uh, so like they just chomp on a workload and then I turn them off. No need to keep those even idle because they eat up a shitload. So really the only things that are running constantly will be JBODs, R720 XD, networking, T620, and R520. So those will be full time on. Those JBODs though, it's a lot of electric on those. 
TJB, I'm glad that you are getting your rack. I saw the rack that you posted. That is a nice rack. That is better than the racks that I've got, by the way. That is like a dream rack. The APC Net Shelter, love those. I had two in this garage when we first got the place, actually. And that was just purely home lab at the time. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. And those are wonderful racks to work with. They've got so many good things. The rear, I think yours had the fingers that has the zero PDU uh, trays in the back. Beautiful. And like, let me show you why that's so important. So without zero PDU trays, you're going to be left with the PDUs kind of hooked up like this. And like I surface screwed these in and this totally sucks. And as you can see, it creates like a lot of like places where it's pretty close. I don't like it being that close. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to have to like put some rubber bumpers here. I'm lucky I've got these really nice guards so I can make sure that there's guards on it also at the same time. But I don't like that. And this is what ends up happening. You're not really even supposed to use, you know, the uh, zero UPDUs for this. You're supposed to, you know, use the two UPDUs probably. But yeah, these older Dell racks, I mean, well, these are good PDUs. I mean, I love these PDUs. Uh, this, these racks are not ideal. So I'm going to pay for that for sure. I don't know exactly how bad that's going to be. This guy over here, I can see it needing not just one PDU, but two PDUs to power it uh, adequately. So each one of these banks can do up to, I believe it's eight amps or nine amps if you're going to run all of them at the same time and still stay at your 80% derating. So that's close. That's very close. I mean, initially, I'll only have two of them running full time. After that, you know, I can grow and expand. If I'm doing plotting as a service for somebody, I can just toss in, you know, some additional discs, spin it up, do it, and then turn it back off. The one thing that is nice here is the trays. And you just kind of slide it out and open it up. I mean, that's easy. That's super easy. And I think I got some discs over here that I can just throw some in. Set it in, slide it back. It's very easy. It's got like this rubberized bottom on it. These up here don't have the rubberized bottom, so I'm gonna probably get caddies for the ones up here. They actually do have little like lock in place caddies, but to be honest with you, I leveled this very well. This is like super firm in place, like those aren't really gonna fly around or anything like that, so I'm not super concerned about it. And then you can just caddy them really quick. So that'll really speed up things a lot. But getting these locked in place is a little bit testy. And if they're warped at all, like if they're kind of like bent up, like this top one's actually bent up a little bit, then it'll mess up the rails. And these rails are so fine that just a little anything and they'll give you a lot of problems. So I would definitely say, yeah, I'm glad I got them, but at the same time, they're, they're definitely a lot more than I thought that I was biting off at the time. I thought they were gonna be very easy. These are definitely not very easy. <laughs> What's your plan on cooling? The most popular question. So let me take this from you real quick here. As you can see, we drill and filled. And so I still need to put pieces of wood in here and put these plugs back and then, you know, let it back up and stuff. So we did drill and fill all of the walls because garages in Texas don't have insulation in the walls. I'm not sure in other states if they do or not, but definitely in Texas, they don't. So we did that. We put in this 24K BTU window AC unit. So that's pretty big. We also have this little Insignia 8K unit here. It kind of stinks, actually. It's not really good. Um, it's a single hose. And you can see, like, I got the single hose still attached to the cat door over here. But I hope to not ever need to use this. We were running, before the J-Bods, 
all of the R920s and R930s and three or four servers and all the networking. So we were running, ah, man, a lot. And it really wasn't an issue for this to keep it cool. And one of the big things that is, I think, better about it this time than what we had before is the orientation before was kind of like this. And now if you're looking at it from like where the AC's at, like the AC actually hits the front of it like perfectly. So I think that's going to be really good. Um, I think that'll help it out a lot. Now, what happens with like the heat out of the backside is the like next question. And yeah, I mean, in the past, I've put fans up here and had them try, try. I say try because they didn't, but try to pull like air out and it didn't really work. Like they were just box fans, these box fans here. And so that didn't work. So I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do is actually try to circulate the air in a controlled fashion from in here back into here. So it can cool a static load that is not changing. That's the only thing I can think of that won't dramatically change the balance of like the air. The other option is maybe I can come up with like a drafting system from outside air to pull in filtered air from outside and then at the same time evacuate air. I don't know. Maybe at that window. That seems decent, like an idea that could work. I also thought maybe I could, you know, run this thing up and over and like have it go into that area and then put like a, you know, really strong fan and have like a several hundred CFM of pressure pushing out. I don't know about that. Like the reason I don't know about that is I would have to have the damper system. So definitely not, not sure what's going to happen there. We'll see. What, what do you guys think I should do? Like I'm open to suggestions. I have no idea. I mean, trying and erring is probably what's going to happen the most. So I'm sure that it'll be something that I roll a video on. The disc shelves are super loud unless they are loaded. If they're loaded and they're, you know, green and they're being, being kept cool, the fans dampen down. So that's, that's something. I mean, when I have two of them running, we'll see how loud it is. I mean, the other thing is we blew a ton of insulation in the attic, so, like, you can't hear. Even, like, these guys are actually pretty loud. They sound like, I don't know, Japanese Zero dive bombers during World War II or something like that. I don't know. That, that's the best explanation I can come up for. But eight of them running at the same time sounds like that. As they, like, ramp up and down. So that was, like, so loud you could hear it, like, 400 feet away from the house. Uh, when we did all the insulation and then when we blew in like many, many feet of insulation into the attic, like you can't, you can't hear it from the street. So I hope that that stays the way that it is there. I am concerned about the noise level. I did put insulation in all of these walls. So it's, uh, Owen's corny. It's supposed to deaden the sound. I hope that that works. Uh, we also have it at a 45 degree angle. So in the front here, if you go that way, there's not a house anywhere. In the back, if you go that way, there's not a house anywhere. And if you like look at the orientation to where we're actually at, there's a lot of insulation between us and this uh, server rack. So we'll see. Uh, I am concerned. I mean, we'll see. Fingers crossed. For those spots in the trays with that rubber, just glue down some rubber rubber sheet down. Yeah, I was thinking rubber sheet. I've also got these little, like, I love these things. They're like, you can just pull them off. They're too big, these, but they make, like, smaller ones. And actually, I could probably cut just these, like, rubber separators from the 3M, like, sheet thing and then just set it down on the corners. And I bet that this would hold also pretty good. Sheet. Uh, da, da, da. Maybe tube right to the AC that's sealed off. I've had that idea for your... Yeah, you know, Nicholas, that was one thing I was thinking is possibly like a giant tube that somehow goes in there and 
I, I think I would need to put pressure on it to get the air moving because this is the intake, right? And like, would I have to like do the size like two by whatever this is, a foot and a half by like two foot or whatever? I don't know. Uh, that's a good idea. And the other thing is like, it needs to run off to the side and then up and like over. I mean, it sounds complicated. Uh, I do like the idea. I thought maybe I could do it with this hose and I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible at all. Uh, maybe it's doable with that hose, but I, I think that it's going to be a trial and error thing for sure. So we'll just see what happens. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, if I have to run both of these two ACs, I'm sure that I can keep the load in here cooled. I mean, one thought that I had was maybe I put that AC inside there and, you know, that way it can kind of cool what the heat that's coming out and then maybe have a couple, those couple of box fans there and the door blowing, you know, the heat that's in there out here. I, I don't know. Like, it's just going to be trial and error. The other cool thing is, like, it's the time of year where it's not going to be a huge problem, I don't think. Um, the whole country of Texas actually gets probably like four or five degrees cooler than Austin, even though I'm just like 20 miles away. So I would imagine that it's not going to be too, too bad, but we'll, we'll see. I, I, I know during the summertime, it probably will be an issue. So next summer coming up and yeah, we'll see what happens then. I'm going to do all the plotting I need to do now though. And like these giant machines can chomp a lot of plots. So I can easily plot all that in probably about... I mean, if I filled them up with eight terabyte disks uh, and I put the next JBot in there, that's like what, I think I calculated maybe like eight terabyte or eight pebibytes of capacity. So, I mean, I could plot that in about eight weeks. So that's not too bad. Uh, whatever I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make sure that I do it while it's cool so that I don't have to run these heavy workload ones like during the hot time of year. And I do have free user space. I mean, I'm not sure how the electric's gonna balance out. I. <laughs> I'm not going to say I have any concerns, but I definitely think this is going to be a lot of load. Those guys are going to be a lot of load. Uh, so when I'm running all this, I think I'm going to be probably about 60% of the capacity on these two circuits. And each one of these has a dedicated circuit running to it. So we'll see what happens. And I mean, it's a 125 amp service that I ran into the garage many, many months ago. If you remember me fighting with that giant aluminum cable, pulling that service line, 90C rated service line the attic oh my god that was horrible but it got in place installed it got installed and it's it's done and there's no copper to aluminum connections anywhere so it's all the code everything's good i just don't want to push that past 80 percent uh which of course everything electricity route wise you want to do right to 80 especially at this length it's a little bit far all right let's see did i put that rail set up there no The cool thing about this is the APC rail trick freaking works with these, which is like wild. Cause I mean, I don't even know. I couldn't find the part numbers for these rails. So I don't even know what rails they are. My guess is they're big chunk and huge rails, but the APC rail trick works for these. So that's pretty good. Save me some money. Uh, screwdriver. These APC rails. Oh, that's good. Except one specific size, and like these guys here are just a little bit too big, but it's very, very difficult to tell just by looking. Yeah. 
here. Then I'm gonna have to dig screws. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to ask. Uh, TDJ, did you get free stuff? Did they give you a good price? Did you get anything free? I'm very interested in that. I know you had talked about like they were pretty close. So hopefully it was such a convenience for them to meet you that they were like, let's toss in all those free things. Cause man, these like freaking screws and everything add up to be a lot. And I mean, I've just gotten mine free just by asking every single time I've gotten a rack. But yeah, I hope you got a lot of stuff for free, man. I think this is a good one. I think this is a good one. And I need some grommets. Go into the back side here. I've actually been thinking, I mean, if the electric bill is really high, I might actually sell a little bit of the Chia. Just by going through pro hashing, you can actually just, you know, get direct 1099 uh, fiat. So I might create a small pool. And if it's going to be like a $600 or an $800 bill, I might sell enough Chia to cover that. So that the home lab pays for itself. Ah, that's gone. I just lost that. Yep. Oh, can you see it? That, the, the night vision on that's actually really good, but I think that like fall on this side. I think it's gone, gone. I got another one. I've got an endless supply of these. It's like the fourth one I've lost. And so I plan on monitoring temperature on the Grafana dashboard. I think that's probably one of the things that I'll monitor the most. Disk temps and also maybe some of like if I can create aggregate information about how many CPUs total, uh, which ones are running, which ones are up, which ones are off. Probably create a Proxmox cluster for most of them. And I'll probably even put the R920s and R930s in the Proxmox cluster. Maybe. I don't know. I'm a little bit meh on it. Uh, but just not have them be part of the quorum. You can actually do that in your config. And that way uh, you won't have a problem starting or stopping if you know eight machines are off because that would definitely affect your quorum. single one in there. Hmm. This bag. Oh, that's a lot. Also. I really just need six more. Not that many. Three. Four, five, six. Now that's one of the big ones. screwdriver. And it's a total pain on this also because like I can't get a screw gun back here as a result of this PDU being in the way. So I like have to get 
this like small little screwdriver in there for all the work on this side. That's a real pain in the butt. Luckily, everything else is Dell, so like I don't have that many other things that I have to screw in because this would be not fun to do for everything. But that these APC rails work and can hold it is pretty freaking cool, I think. The most useful rail in the world? Maybe. I got really nervous when Lithium Solar was talking about his fiasco that he was running into with his not having like the proper gapping. I was like, oh no, <laughs> is that what's going to happen with these? Like freaking out. So when I put it, the first one in and it actually worked, I was like, okay, that's actually really not that bad at all. And so the other thing that I do is I tighten up this side completely. This side, I'll leave it a little bit loose. And that way, after I get the J-Bot jammed up in here, I can uh, come back and tighten it down. That way, it'll expand out a little bit on the sides to allow it to fit in there nicely. Which it seems to have to do to be able to allow it to fit. I think I need one more over on that other side. Literally, I can see that this is bent up here in the middle just a little bit, so I'm <sighs> trying to adjust it. <clears throat> and so when we got the load, some of them had been strapped, and they like freaking strapped the absolute hell out of them. And so they compressed. That's pretty close. It's better than it was. I hope that's good enough. Yeah, so when they compress like that, they're not straight. So that even bent some of the trays on them. So one of the pallets, unfortunately, if Josh, you're watching, I don't know if you're in the stream or not, but I'm pretty sure the first pallet that we opened that you got your first four off of and I got my first four off of, those were just, the fit on those was absolutely garbage. I've got trays and trays over there now that are just like, I would, I would say they're lost causes kind of. All right. That is a lot of warpage on that also still right now. It probably is okay. I'm just going to put in the bottom tray and see if I can get that in there to, cause problems but the other thing that you definitely have to check is that this little slidey thing actually operates this little doohickey mechanism there I don't know if you can see that on both sides and this one does if it doesn't then all sorts of problems oh yeah look at that look at where that hit and it dented the frame right there so before I even put this in, I'm going to try to crack that a little bit. You see? 
see what I mean about things being a little bit like fragile. <laughs> Definitely government got rid of them for a reason. And they could have done a better job of being more careful with everything, but I can also understand they were probably just like, get it done. See if it'll fit a tray in. Yeah, and these have a mechanism if you heard it just latch in right there. So you can only open one tray at a time. For some reason, the very end of these has this problem where it doesn't want to go that last little bit in. Seems pretty common. I can see now why so many people sell these trays aftermarket. It's because there's clearly a lot of defects or travel or something that's not adequately accounted for. Okay, so that side got in. That side did not get in. So yeah, it fit in there. Woo! Gonna call that a minor win. On some level, I am concerned about a couple of these that have mechanical issues like that. I mean, if I can get them up and running in the first place, then I think I care much less. But I just got concerns whether or not they like actually have damaged some sort of a component at some point in time. It doesn't look right, does it? Do you see that? This looks like too much of a gap. This looks like way too much of a gap. Like that definitely has to be way too much of a gap. But it's in the rail. Hmm. Because that's in the rail, and it's all the way down here. This is in the rail, but it's all the way up there. Did I put this in backwards? Son of a... Put it in upside down. This is the second time I've done this also. So. That probably explains a lot of that. I wonder if people were actually saying that already in the chat. That would be funny. <laughs> you know what? I could actually turn the chat on that thing so I can just read it there. That'd be easier.
if this isn't the craziest J Rod racking you've ever seen, I don't know what else will it be. <laughs> I'm glad I saw that before I went further. That would have been just crazy. Not bad. Definitely not as much clearance as I would like on the bottom of it, but this one has just got some warpage on it that I don't think we can overcome. Good enough. Power cables for them. I like they had these nice short ones. This will make cable management much easier here. I can see that some of these retainers got broken off and they're actually still on here. So, it's a shame. NetApp makes actually really nice little retainers. These are definitely 240V, yeah. So everything, all of this infrastructure is all running at 240. And like my electric here runs usually about 245 to 246. So get it, get a couple extra chunks of wattage in there. Now I'll probably leave those top two for that. So I need one, two here. And if you see here, there's banks. If you come and point at this. So there's branch A, branch B, and branch C. And so up here you can see, this will tally up your amps for you when it's running. Branch A, branch B, and branch C. And these are actually really cool. And like they threw in all of these. And I've got like 20 of these that they threw in when I was uh, buying the PDUs or the UPSs. So they were very nice to throw these in because these are like really, really good ones. Um, but yeah, I think I can run about eight. So yeah, if this is four, then probably just want to run two off of each branch is my guess. 
And I definitely want to get the retainers for them also. Although these retainers don't like these big chunk and fat heads that these got on them. Thankfully the government did include all the power cables, which is really nice because this is a lot of power cables here. Probably go ahead and just do like that. I'm gonna take two of these retainers off. Put them up here. And all this power's off. Like, if you ever get these things, be super freaking careful. Like, oops, you know what I mean? Like, all of this is off at the breaker. So don't don't jam one of these inside there, or else you'll be foobar. You'll have a very bad day. But these are actually really nice little retainers. And as long as you don't over bend them out, like they hold the the form really good. And so I'll probably put one there. And then like one here. So that I got clear pathway for everything. So I'm gonna go grab some Velcro. I did find my giant ball of Velcro. So that's great. Like I was worried. So I've got Velcro for days. Nothing makes me happy like Velcro. It's like the best stuff in the world for doing almost everything like this. I mean, I like I like zip ties also because they're like really clean looking, but they're so permanent and. If you ever got to change anything, and like, when don't you have to change something? There you go. Got to cut them. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I like that. I think that is a good spot to just go ahead, go around like that. That looks pretty clean to me. And like, these don't have bars on the back and cable management arms, probably because I don't have the actual real rack, you know, trays. Like the Dells, they've got built in you know, mounting points for all the cable assemblies, for all the cable management arms and stuff. So that's probably why these don't have them. I would definitely envision these, you know, OEM having something because I'm not going to let that bother me too much. See that one kind of got twisted there. I'm not going to let that like totally ruin my day. I'm going to try not to. I'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll be like back there trying to fix it probably. Yeah, it stinks that these really nice retention assemblies got broken on these. And like most of them are just still hanging out on the actual cables there. Because these things are really cool. So you can, if, if you've ever dealt with a NetApp anything, it almost always has this. And like you can pull this back, open it up, and then there's a little tab down here at the bottom. And you can pull this and slide it back out. And so, let me show you real quick, like if you... Lock it in place like that, and then you grab this little tab down here. Maybe even press it a little bit to start it. Then you can cinch it in really nice. And like, that's a very positive, like you can't get it out of there. It's like really cool. I wish they had them for these, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with per bank and I'm gonna have to figure something out else out about another PDU because I've got eight of these and not six of them I mean I don't have to figure it out immediately so that's the nice thing 
because I'm not going to just idle them and have them on for no reason. So I've got time to figure that one out. Goes in like that. Comes up and down into there like that. And then I can pull this up and snug it in really good. That way you can't just walk by and snag yourself on it and pull it out. I wish it was like that over here with these. Actually, going to take these two off here. And I'm going to repurpose those over there because if you notice, like how close these are, these actually hit this, and these really nice metal retainers keep it from actually hitting the plugs themselves and putting pressure or anything on them. So, I think uh, I'm going to. This is a fuse, so that's fine. It's it's not going to hit anything there. This one looks like it's set up. That one over there, I think there's maybe an arm here that might need. Yeah, and these things also, like, if you overbend them, you can take them out and, like, scrunch them back. And then re-peel them back, and they're back in place there. These are called CDUs. I like cable management. It just doing it right just feels good when you look at it and you're like, yeah, electric wired safely. Feels good. Like, is that some form of OCD? I don't know. Probably. It's not quite as nice as that other one. It's gonna go like that. And just go around that. I wanna go around one that has the retentions on it. Well, this one has the retention on it. Go on that side. That way it's anchored to one that is firmly in place. I need a bigger piece of Velcro. Not quite as nice, but not horrible. Still got mainly the cables out of the way. Thank you for joining in and watching me OCD out. I appreciate it. Oh shit. These all need to move down.
So I don't know, I kind of looked at it all today and I was like, what have I done? This is insane. I don't know if uh, y'all had that moment when you were watching me do this, but I feel like I crossed some sort of a barrier of like sanity a little bit. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a hell of a lot of compute power. <laughs> this is a hell of a lot of disk storage. <laughs> The nice people at Traffic Labs, when they sent me an email for that review that they did about me, they were like, you have more hardware than some companies. I was like, yeah. But those companies that don't have this much hardware wished they had this much hardware. That's the important thing. Plus, what's crazy is, like, I actually put this all to use, so... I don't know how you do with it. So this will make plotting as a service, which I do with the R920s and R930s, way faster. I spend a lot of time cave, or caddying and uncaddying currently, and like that is, it, it's it's ridiculous how much time I spend caddying and uncaddying. So this will definitely help with that. It'll also allow me to grow my farm in a block storage fashion. So two of these to start with. Are going to be just for me so that's 120 trays these two down here are probably going to be the ones that i'm going to have just for me i and you're probably wondering I, I if you're just joining i can't find this one it's somewhere around here but i don't know where i stuck it uh so it'll it'll turn up uh but yeah so these two down here are going to be for me uh, i'll probably start from the top down and work on these as being the ones that i use for plotting as a service and then eventually somewhere in the middle uh we'll meet so the ones that are used for plotting as a service, those will be turned off when they're not doing active, you know, plotting for people. The ones down here for me will be staying on and running in the farm the whole time. And planning on using BGFS for this and pretty excited. Uh, like, I, I think that there's some people that are actually really interested in this project. So I think there could be some like decent coverage on it also. And I mean, BGFS is a really interesting file system and I think it'll really work pretty darn well for my use case here. We'll just have to wait and see. I'll probably try, try out a couple of things and see, you know, what works, what doesn't work. But for the ones that are up here, I'm going to be getting SAS. So these will just be traditional drives in SAS because block storage is not something that people traditionally are going to be setting up for a farm. And you can't just take something that's, you know, created with block storage and pop it in and it just start working. So yeah, these down here for me will be surfaced via iSCSI shares. So there's that in a nutshell. So yeah, I definitely need to get more there because I've got two up here. So I'm definitely going to need another PDU. Uh, we'll call that good enough for this cabling at the moment and move on to some networking because there's a couple pieces that I think I forgot. Yeah, I anchored this in and I need to actually put all the trays in, put these little like arms in. These are like ugh, these little like snake things. They are very difficult to get in right. And you can see here, I've got one of them in wrong. I've got one of them kind of in wrong. This is how they're supposed to like profile in there. And getting them to actually do that when you stick them in is incredibly difficult to do. And like, this is all super sharp sheet metal in here. So like everything you do, you're gonna cut yourself up. So I don't wanna cuss that much for you all at this moment in time. But this one up here, I'm definitely just gonna have SAS in this so that I can use this really quickly for doing the caddy on caddy operations. Josh was talking to me like just a couple of nights ago about uh, like how he thinks and we did some math and he was like all the way down to four terabytes because like our electric, mine's like nine cents. I think his is 10 cents, maybe a little bit more. Um, but like, I think that we'll be able to He's planning on running his like down to smaller sizes. 14 terabytes is really pretty much the only, you know, size that I'm interested in. Like everything above that is good. So I do have some eight terabyte drives that I still need to sell. I've been talking about selling them, but I haven't done it yet. Um, but as soon as I get those, you know, out the door also, 
I should have a roughly 1.2 and then another 300 that is already here. You want to see some hard drives? Let's go, let's go check out some hard drives. Juicy hard drives. That's a lot of hard drives there. Yes, I am happy. Uh, and every time I get in hard drives, I feel really good about it. You notice I haven't no, like done any sort of a, we're going back out, so. I just wanted to wet people's whistle with hard drives. I'm not gonna actually list those hard drives for a while though, because I'm gonna be using quite a bit of them. All right, so this is something that's really sketchy that I've done. Um, I don't think this is good. I took a one of those rails over there at the very bottom, if you want to pan and show them those rails at the very bottom. Those are MD-1000 rails, and like they're for these old, old J-Bods that are super energy inefficient, these guys here. And what I did was I put them in here, and then I was like, because I know I, I get really like, upset with like the sagging network switch. If you have ever installed a network switch, it like sags and it's like, why the, it, it's not like cool. And also this SX6036, it's like smaller than other network switches. So it kind of like needs to set on top of another network switch. So I put in the rails and then I just slid them on it. They're like not really, really great on the coverage on the edges, but I put the screw in and I'm gonna call it good enough but it's super sketchy, I think. I don't know what I'm thinking. This is definitely probably gonna end bad. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna check the comments, see what people think about that. Should I stick with that? Am I gonna regret this? Does NetApps need all four PSUs running? Uh, so they have two PSUs per unit and four blower fans per unit and two EMMs per unit. So each one that got plugged in there's one on the top and then one on the bottom for each one of those units. And yes, they do, unless you want the fans to ramp up like crazy. I think you could run them with just one, but I'm not sure. I didn't load all of the disks up in the test that I was doing. You have to load a minimum 15 disks in tray one for it to even have a chance at ramping down the fans. And you have to have all the disk trays in for it to have a chance at ramping down the fans. And when I didn't have everything plugged into the back, it was definitely wee going crazy with the fans. And it was like a ramp profile. When I had everything in, they actually stayed much quieter. And those fans, I am gonna probably guess are very high amperage, very high CFM fans, because they actually kind of have a weird configuration. They don't pull directly from the front. They pull from the middle back plane, if you see that up there. And then they pull out to the sides and then out through that. So it's like air comes in, air goes out, and then air goes that way. So it's a crazy design that they have for them. And I guess that provides cooling for the EMMs and the PSUs at the same time. So that's probably something that I don't think I can really alter those fans. I was thinking about it. I was like, maybe I could put box fans in front because... These are not high CFM. These are like the highest I could buy, and like they come really close to like almost fitting, but I just didn't think this would work. Like, I don't think this would work. It would be cool if it would work, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it could move anywhere near enough air to cool off those two 90 degree turns. Because again, there it goes this way, and then it goes this way, and then it goes that way. And it's just like, I don't know who designed this craziness, but they definitely designed it kind of crazy in my estimation. Like, we'll see what happens. I hope they're not super duper loud. We'll see if they're super duper loud. Suggest putting up your own sheet arm on top, bottom ones, and plot as a service, Jake Bods, at arm height. Okay, somebody that works in a data center, by the way. Uh, yeah, that makes a hell of a lot more sense because this, 
is like a shitload easier than this and getting on trays and or getting on ladders and yeah that's a perfect idea that's much much better thank you for saving me a headache because i would have just been like huh there it is i'm just gonna go put this back you don't gotta follow me Hello, glad to see you, uh, everybody. Josh, how are you doing? I can't believe I don't have to pay for this. Josh, this is the alpha on using these, and actually on Home Lab sales two nights ago, a night ago, uh, I don't know. Uh, Josh reached out and contacted somebody. There was somebody that was like, "This is what two puppy bites looks like," and I believe they were using eight terabyte discs, so you can fit if we're using 16 or 18, quite a bit more. And so that is like the exciting part of this is that the density that you can get out of these J-Bods in the rack footprint is really impressive. And I like that a lot. I think that he even reached out and talked to the systems administrator and she let him know a couple of things about that. And I need to like have a debrief with him and find out if he got more goods on the DE 6600s I think the version they were using was a more high-end, more recent version than these. These are 2014 date of manufacture, and I believe I looked at the model number on the ones that Josh, that, that lady had been installed in some data centers, and I think that those were like 2018, 2019, much more re recent and modern. They looked like they were geared towards high performance, significantly higher also. And I got scared because the wattage on those, that was like the first thing I checked. I was like, the wattage on those. And it was like 500 watts more per JBOD than ours. I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. And then I like went and found ours again. And I was like, okay, no, 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 it's okay. We should be at just like one kilowatt for 60 discs. Like probably that's where we'll end up, something like that. That's not super awesome, but also you can't get density like this without having increased fan like requirements and so that's kind of the drawback of you know going with density is you're going to have a higher watt per tray cost and if you look at a d4246 or 4243 that's by far the best wattage per tray that i've seen to date and that is i mean i think eight watts per tray eight, eight to nine watts per tray versus these could be between 15 and 17 is kind of where I'm estimating. Hopefully the Chia workload isn't such that it's like, hey, we need to spin this like crazy. And you know, drives have their own internal mechanisms, so it could work out that it's actually not that bad. Here's hoping, we'll see. Slim in here to see if I do this right. Slim, your name's Nelson? I didn't know that, Slim. It's crazy. Also, these will last forever. Oh, dude, yeah, that is one of the cool things, is that these will last literally, I mean, these are engineered to last for a very fucking long time. I will say the fragility of the trays is a little bit like, that, and I don't know if you were in when I mentioned this, Josh, I mentioned this kind of early on, that first batch that we unbanded, that they kind of had tight, uh, that definitely had caused some damage that I've seen now in two of these. One of them was actually unusable. I took it back to the storage unit. So before you come down next, do a fit and finish check on the JBOD you've got. And that way we can know like, the because you might even have like a single tray that's bad that needs to be swapped out for another tray. So that way we can figure out like, how to like account for it all so that we like divvy up like actual working stuff and you know that way we're not like oh man I chose poorly I mean that's my thoughts on it if you want to do the whole like chose poorly thing then maybe we can roll that way also but I'm down here so I can test them all out right now uh, but yeah making sure that they come all the way out also making sure that the blue tabs on them on the sides slide all the way in and out that's critical to do if it doesn't do that then you'll definitely have like some pretty big problems. I like this display. So this was the TV that was behind me in the old area. And like, that's pretty cool. 
Like, honestly, I never used it where it was before, but I think I'm going to use it all the time now. And it's actually a pretty low wattage TV, and it was actually a rather cheap TV also, so I think I paid like 200 bucks for it, $250, something like that. Are you okay? The light? Okay. The light's got a glare. She's fighting glare. Such a camera movie. So proud. Uh, is that better? Yeah. So, like, this way you don't get, like... I mean, that was cheap. That was, like, 250 bucks all total with the mount. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's, like, 55 inches. I think I might have mounted it up a little too high. But, I mean, I guess my eyes hit right about there. Maybe that's not bad. I don't know. This one over here is, like, perfect. I've already been, like, watching TV on it and stuff. And I can see myself playing video games out here also. So, that probably happened. This one was in the guest bedroom, and it has a scratch on it, but as long as it's on, you don't really see the scratch. So, another super cheap TV, but, I mean, they work, and they're cheap, and they're 4K, so they can display, like, Grafana or Machinaris and just be, like, totally fine, I think. No, 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 yeah, you don't need anything 3D printed. I already tried it out with drives, and, like... The cool thing about it is these back two here have like a rubber, like something, I don't know what to call it. It's like a sticky rubber. Um, and so when you put the drive in and then lock it into place, like it's not going anywhere. Like it's there. It's like super in place. So that would be why I don't think we need a 3D printed or anything like that. Yeah, this one's bad. This is also like, like I have a whole bunch. This is a 250 gigabyte. Like th these are all, I'm saving these for the sledgehammer thing that I'm going to start doing. Like we're going to videotape me sledgehammering things, hard drives. And then we're going to see if they work afterwards. Uh, these up here, I think that just like some little rubber sticky things that we could put in the corners. will do the same thing as back here. Um, these up here, I mean, if you were going to get a caddy for the, for the front, like, I think this is one, five, 11, 14, 15 or something like that. Like you might want to go ahead and do that, but one, four, seven, ten. So they give you the disc layout right there. One, four, seven, ten. Uh, you could do that, but I don't think it's necessary at all. And I mean, when I had them in there, there was, I was like, watching to see if I could see anything like happening zero vibration so very cool I mean that part of these is really good I would say actually having the grill covers might not be bad I have caught myself on the edges of these and cut myself a couple of times if you see my arm right here like that was earlier after catching one of these and like this thing is sharp these things are they're nothing but sheet metal Okay, so back to networking. So if nobody's going to object, I'm going to go ahead with the plan and just go with V3 here. And can you get that? Is it going to focus? That's amazing that it's going to focus. And we're going to do the networking stuff here next. And so I've got those at the wrong height. So I'm going to pull the 6036. If you are thinking of buying a 6036, before you do anything, contact the seller on eBay. Tell them you have to know whether or not it's got all the licenses on it. And they might give you a picture of like this. This is kind of useless. So you don't want the service tag. That's not going to tell you anything. Um, if you get one and it is a, what is it? Is it the IBM version that can be flashed to the EMC and then you get all the goodies with it? But you want to make sure that you've got the ETH license included on it. So annoy the sellers and tell them, hey, you need to know what license is on it. And that also verifies that it's going to work because uh, these are a little bit sketchy. They're old. They're a little bit sketchy. So couldn't hurt to make sure that they power on before they go through the headache of shipping them to you. So yeah, 
Going to have everything front mounted here as far as. And so you can see that it's sketchy now. And I'm going to demonstrate how sketchy it is here in just a second. So it almost wants to fall. It's like super close to falling right here. Like it seriously wants to fall off that rail. If it was just another like millimeter there, if you can see that, like it would be falling off. So this is a very sketchy, stupid idea that I came up with for how to get this on there. And it's just because I don't like sagging racks, uh, sagging network switches. So if anybody's got any better ideas, let me know. Because this one seems like it could definitely backfire. If nobody says anything, I'm going to do it. So we need the base here. I've done something wrong. I did it wrong over here. I'm high by one. If you're just joining, you missed me racking one of the J bods upside down earlier, also. That was that was fucking right. I was like, why isn't this looking right? <laughs> off inside there. Yes, it did. Perfect. You can see it's right here. Broke off inside there. Well, you know, the nice thing about this is I've got a lot of these racks, so let's do it again. This is me being cheap. This is me being very, very cheap. I don't have enough of the APC rails to spare here because I did the APC rail trick for all of these and it worked. So, like, I'm freaking, like, elated over there. 
So these are just gonna go to the trash can. Also, if anybody wants the MD 1000s, those are SAS 1. I don't have any of the cables for them, but you're, you're welcome to them. If you're in the Austin area, let me know. Can have. I'm gonna try to find a better screw. Uh, these were obviously threaded. Not quite right. Okay. Two, one, two, three. I'm gonna play your button. find a better screw for it this time. Also probably not use the impact driver. See, that seems much more reasonable. Get that switch. Actually, I'm going to doing sketchy things to try and make it work. That is one hell of a surface rusted screw that I chose there. Like I'm, I know I'm going to end up taking that back out because I just thought this is going to like totally trigger me. And so since I put these in after I got the trim pieces installed, this might be slightly beneficial or useful. See, that looks so much better. Uh, and you can't really tell. Like, I don't think anybody's seen it yet. Let me take this real quick. Oh, it goes crazy. So I found, like, foam pieces, and I stuck in here. Like, there's foam. So it probably won't rattle whatsoever, because I did that on the tops. And you can't even see where I did it on the sides. But <laughs> I don't know. I was supposed to have way more space than this on the sides. Like, way, way more space. This angle is also off by, like, a couple of, I would say, 10 degrees, easily. Uh, up here, the clearance was fine, but the calculations on this uh, angle here and stuff. I got a little bit crazy there, clearly. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to get rid of that now because it's already upsetting me. And so the Brookhead ICX 6610, really cool for a couple of reasons. First, you've got eight 10 gigabit uh, SFP plus ports up here. 
got 48 gigabit. These can be PoE also if you have the PoE, which is indicated by the 610, the ICX 610, and then the 48P, if you can see the P at the end there. Has actually really cool little readouts here. And there's a variety of fan styles. So if you like, like usually I would rear mount all of my networking stuff, but I'm actually gonna mount like pass-throughs so that the cabling can just be like passed through. Uh, but yeah, this is actually like got really great status indicators. The other thing that's like super bomber about this is that if you come around to the back here, honey, and you look up here, you've got FDR compatible 40 gigabit slots. And so two of these can break out to uh, four. So you get eight additional 10 gigabit slots and you get two pure 40 gigabit slots. That's really cool. And it's got dual PSUs. This is actually a very quiet unit. If you clean out the inside and there's lots of people that have modded them and cut the top on them and put a fan in there so that it keeps the chipset really, really cool. And yeah, with PoE capabilities, this is a pretty sweet little uh, uh, switch here. Okay, the next switch is just getting stacked on top of it. actually going to come flying out of there. I'm not going to be crawling off of it, but I mean, maybe I've got some zip ties, some massive zip ties. This is not the most insane thing you've seen in a while. Then clearly you need to hit subscribe. Because more insane stuff like this happens all the time. I think that we've gone to the crazy spot. Not sure exactly what I envisioned this helping with, but see, it still slides out. I guess it wouldn't slide out and tip up, but it still slides down. Is there anything else I can do? Yeah. If anybody's got an idea, let me know. So that doesn't really do jack shit. Mm. I 
couldn't get it tight enough. I don't know what to say. Let's take a look and see if there's any comments. Any idea of how much it idles? Yeah, actually, I do have information on that. I forget, but it was really... Like, so, the Brocade ICX 6610, I believe it was somewhere in the 40 or 30... PC Tinkerman on the Discord has really good stats on it because he keeps the stats on like everything and he's got one also. He got me into it and um, yeah, I think it, it, I mean, the whole thing used about one, one amp max when I was running all the front and all the back. So that was 16 10 gigabit slots and two 40 gigabit slots and those like just those use a lot more power than your one gigabit uh, networking does. Uh, and I think I had five or six of the front ones. I had the PoE disabled and it was, yeah, roughly around probably 120, 130, maybe 40, uh, something like that. I think that PC Tinkerman would have probably the best stats on this as far as the running wattage. The one that's a surpriser is the 6036 because this is all 40 gigabit. Um, InfiniBand, also Ethernet, but it just, like, this thing idles at, like, 40 watts. So that's, like, crazy good. And, like, even when it's running, it doesn't, like, ramp up. It just, like, continues. Because I guess it's just built with the ASIC to do that. So it doesn't have a lot of overhead. But these are both kind of generationally, you know, 20, 13, 14, 15, something like that is my guess. So I, I think that, you know, they, they both have really good performance. This is actually what I'll be connecting to the dish shelves to communicate with them. Also, this has connections for every one of the servers. So I'll have shared storage, shared storage, shared storage. And then these, whenever they need to write to it, can hit that and write to it super fast. I'm going to try out one of these with some SSDs and see how fast that we can get the storage. It looks like they were oftentimes used in something called GPFS from IBM. IBM surprisingly has some of the best documentation on the DE6610, 6600s. And I think IBM deployed them heavily as part of the GPFS uh, operating system. So there would have been an additional head-end unit that went along with this and the GPFS file system being something that is kind of a proprietary file system. I don't think you can get access to it for free. Uh, I think BGFS uh, or Looster are the probably best parallel compute file systems that are out there. And both of those should work with block storage. The other thing that's cool is I think TrueNAS, I know FreeNAS did, but I think TrueNAS can communicate with IB storage. So I'm going to test that out. That would be super cool if TrueNAS can do it. Although I'm not big on ZFS disk utilization for Chia, I think for other things it's really, you know, quite good and we could see something really cool happen there also if we can get TrueNAS interoperating with these guys that's a lot of fun that I mean that's a lot of fun and I noticed that as far as 60 bay j bods these guys are pretty darn cheap the Storinator 45s look like they're actually very attractive like if you can find them used and those have like a full compute unit inside it also so you can maybe find a low pot power like thing that you would be able to put in and get 45 drives out of it. And you can change out the fans and all sorts of other stuff. So I, if I wasn't, if I didn't have these, I would probably be looking at the like Storinator 45 drive j -Bods. I think those are pretty cool. The Super Micro that has 36 and 48 are also very cool. I uh, got one of the 24s and Josh, we do have another 24 I checked in the uh, storage unit. And Mr. Lithium Solar Mike might be interested in it. So we can let him know some sort of a price for that at some point. Getting a lot of adult dating sites coming in here. Don't get too excited, everybody. Uh, this is not Chia, only Chia. This is Dusty said, only Chia. I think that's hilarious. Oh, good. You did get a bunch of cage nuts and bolts. That's perfect. You got the cable ladder? Perfect. That's awesome. That's, that's one use for old MD-1000 rails. I have no other use for MD-1000 rails, so I don't know what to say elsewise. Uh, did I test out, did he, me? 
did I test out these? I tested out one of them, and the rest of them are going to work, and they're so modular that if there's not a part that works or a component that works, I can swap a component really quick. So let's go back really quick, and I'll show you how modular these are. So if a PSU doesn't work, there's status indicator lights on all of this, and these lights come on whenever there's a problem. So if there's an indicator light that's shining here, like this warning light here, that would indicate got a problem there. Um, but if there's a problem with one of the two PSUs, can easily change that out. If there's a problem with one of the uh, modular controllers, it'll give us a warning indicator light here. And so those warning indicator lights were coming on when I was trying to use the fiber channel, uh, which I, fiber channel is very stupid. Uh, but InfiniBand is actually pretty freaking cool. So InfiniBand did not give me that warning. But even if there was one of these cable arms that has an issue, like these things slide out and you can replace just the separate cable arm, like the entire thing is modular. Like these blower fan assemblies, they come in and go out of them also. Like the there's not very much guts actually inside the bay itself. And we've got so many of these freaking things that we could cannibalize a couple and get all the useful parts that we need. So I'm not worried about the actual units themselves not being, you know, able to be operated. I'm just worried about the noise level and the electric usage that they're going to have. Again, the description on the website says about a thousand watts. So that's not that bad for 60 drives. I'm actually okay with that if that's all it is. We'll have to see. Be careful of that wire there. John, you're a Dell, you're a former Dell tech. Love Dell gear, man. I can, I can only say this about Dell gear. I love it. It just freaking like, ready rails are such the bomb. Like, look at that. Look at how easy and effortless that is. Like, do you want to take it apart? Like, just open it up. Take literally everything in here that's got blue on it, you can press it and take it apart. I fucking love Dell. Dell has made so many good systems. And I mean, I'm proud that, you know, they're an Austin kind of based company. And I've had a bunch of friends that worked at Dell. I'm also in Austin. So I appreciate that they've done a hell of a lot to contribute to the tech economy in the Austin area. Now, under EMC management. I'm not sure how that all shook out, but I mean, that is one of the companies that I really think as far as server gear, I mean, these are just rock solid machines. Like they don't stop. I absolutely love that. I mean, I have not had one of these that's like, oh, you've got a power issue. Oh, you've got a bad backplane. Like they all just effing work. I do use conditioned power. It is online, double online conversion from the UPSs. So, I mean, I think that has something to do with it, no doubt. But, I mean, there's just rock solid gear. I'm in love with Dell servers, specifically. What is the chassis in the middle rack under the... Oh, so this is a T620, and I've got two of the 32 bay, or two of the 16 to make it a 32. Actually, when I got this, you can get one that has the, if you get a 2.5 inch, you can convert it to have two of the 2.5 inch. If you get one that has 3.5 inch, you cannot convert it whatsoever. It's just what it is. And so you can only get like eight. There is a rare backplane model that has 12 in the T620. In the T630 and T640, those are really exciting. Those are like awesome, to be honest with you. You can get so much more. And inside the T620 here, I mean, look at that freaking full size graphics card. They made adapters, the GPU kits that have eight pin and six pin on them. And there's four of these. There's four of these. You can run four GPUs off this freaking thing. That's like beast. This is such a beast of a machine. And like, you can't fit two double or four double height cards in here. I mean, really effectively if they're like modern GPUs, maybe if they were like data center GPUs, you could. But I mean, you can fit four single height, no problem. Like a couple here, 40 gigabit, a uh, nice braid controller, and you can connect these two together and have just a 
pile of I.O. here. Like, I absolutely love these freaking servers. And like, they've got 24 slots of RAM. So that is a ton of RAM that you can jam in here. I mean, I forget, I think it's 1.5 terabytes max that these in LRDIM can go to and 768 in RDIM. So, I mean, that is like, an, the, one of these machines can virtualize your entire house's infrastructure. As a matter of fact, this machine virtualized our entire house's infrastructure for almost a year and a half. And we just used terminals to connect all of it together. And I mean, it worked really good. You definitely want the fan wall if you can find a T620 or a T630. It will lower the fan noise substantially. And if you've got GPUs, I think the, the machine will start barking errors at you in iTrack if you don't have that. But I do love my T620. 2697 V2s are the kind of peak of what you can get in that particular piece of hardware. But again, 2697 V2s, really freaking capable. The R930s, R920s are E7s versus E5s. And so the R930, a monster of a machine here. Also a monster of electricity. If you're fully cranking on it, you can expect about 900 watts. R920, about 1,000 watts cranking full on it. And that is four sockets. So this is quad sockets. These are all quad sockets. And so, yeah, they use a lot. And the E7 is some sort of a freak because the times I get plotting on this, the benchmarks I've got on the R920s, put it in the top 50 computers. This is insane on some of the benchmarking tools out there. Currently, currently, this thing's competing with Epics and this thing's freaking old as can be. The R930s doing the exact same thing. I mean, they are monsters of processing and they still do a really good job, especially like the R920s for one reason. DDR3, and man, you can fit a lot of DDR3 in these because they've got those huge bays. So much, so much. Oh, you worked on the R series 11 through 14. Definitely hit me up. I've got some questions for you I would love to ask. And I mean, you sound like you know what you're talking about here also. So that's, that's really cool. <laughs> this is your company went to Super Micro and you started hating like I've only had one thing happen to me with a Super Micro that was really bad. The rails broke on one of my things and it came down and it like sliced my wrist. And like some people are like, did you try to kill yourself? I'm like, no, a Super Micro server tried to kill me. I have an old R905 for balance. The bottom of your home like, yeah, you know, those are, the R905s were gigantic. And like, they made nothing but steel for those. So those were like super, super honking heavy. Back to networking. We are super distracted here, folks. Super duper distracted. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna put in there is one of these finger deals. I thought it was a clever use, but this is turning out to not be a clever use, and it's turning out to be a pain in the butt. I think I'm going to actually rethink the networking thing here. I am still hoping to not have network sag, but at the same time, this is this is not going to work out. Like I can't, I cannot not, not this is not going to mount here because the little like push tabs are there and it's got sticky outy things. So, like I would have to go up here, which might not be that bad. Let me see if I can use one of these. Blanks. The blank is very unhappy with this. It does not like it either. No, the blank is telling me no. Wow, the blank is not even coming close to fitting in there. Okay, let me try the rubber mount on the blank. And you might think, you're using a rubber mallet on a blank? That's blanking abuse, but it's not really. You know, no 
know what? I think I got that in there. And I can just go one above. Nice. Same difference to me, in my opinion. I don't think there's any big deal for me to need to do it any other way. Da, 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 da. Get some nuts. Get in there. This is not a rack tool. I don't know where I put my rack tool, so unfortunately I'm trying to use one of these. You know what? I'm just gonna have to give up on the M6s. The M6s are like really tight for this rack for some reason. But this is what I'm using. It usually works, but it's just a little bit too tight right now. 10, 30 seconds. that in there. No problem. That's our another M6. Ten thirty seconds seem to work in the gel rack really good. The M6s, I don't know. They're very, very tight. I can't believe you guys have been watching me build this whole thing since like the first piece of wood and lining it all up and stuff. That's insane. Actually, I think I even started planning this with you all. Thank you for being channel members and hanging around and everything. Really appreciate that. It's been fun. Chia. Many people on my channel share the same affinity to Chia.
and people might be thinking, have I got the LEDs yet? No, I've not got the LEDs yet, but I've got a Best Buy gift certificate, so I'll probably use that for the LEDs. I was looking at the LifeX ones. Somebody told me they work really good and they don't create crazy uh, uh, moyana pattern for video. So I might check that out. And so really, I'm not even going to use the gigabit ports on the brocade. For the most part, I'm using it for all the 10G connections that it's got. And then this will be just the 40G connections. And I've got, like, we got so many 40G connections from the government that, like, I've got enough for literally everything. So, yay. I don't have to buy any cards. And PCIe Gen 3 maxes out, like, the bus bandwidth really well for 40 gigabit. It really just does a great job. It's like they were built and engineered in the same generations. So they really work hand in hand, in my opinion, very, very nicely. There we go. That looks good. And up above that, I am putting the Dell Power Connects 5548P. And I've had this switch forever, and it's a great switch too. And you can find these for like 50 bucks. And they have PoE and everything. the sack on it. Do I got another set of rails? You know what, I got another set of rails. situation with this one at least I can see a spot to zip tie. I'll just zip tie. It's all very much in the way.
it's not going to fit in there. I hope everybody's having a great day. Got any questions about server, racks, whatever? Toss it in the comments. I can just feed these up through these little fingers here and I probably will just use the back ones for the 10 gigabit connections and I'm just gonna leave these off I'll do all the PoE from the Dell power connect up here because it's already got all of that stuff set up on it so I don't think I have to reconfigure anything and I can put server. The R2-10-2. Where did it go? This is weird. I don't know where I put it. I've lost a server. Server down. We've got a server down. I guess it was bound to happen, but Kind of weird. Yeah, I did. I lost the R210 too. Uh, not something I was expecting to have happen. Uh, yeah, I was going to set that up on top of it, so I'm not going to do that now. Uh, all right, so we'll call that that. And <coughs> got the networking patch cable here. This will not go up there now. Clearly, I suck at networking. I think a lot of people suck at networking. I'm just honest about sucking at networking. I suck at networking. I have planned this out poorly, and as a result of that, my networking is not working at the moment. Um, and I'll probably have yet another plan for, like, we're going to have plan four, I guess, for the rack, uh, is what it looks like at this point. So I was planning on putting this somewhere, and now I'm confused. It's because on the fly I added that spacer. Because on the fly, I added that spacer. I was supposed to have it down here. And this is actually supposed to be the Dell, I think. Uh-oh. No, no, no. The Dell is up there. And the R210 is above it. But they're actually higher. 
So I have not followed my plan, and as a result of not following my plan, I am now in the situation that I'm in. I did follow the plan over there. I did follow the plan over here. So we can seal these up. Let's go ahead and do that. The networking is going to be... progress on the network. And I do need to find the R210 too, because that's actually got all my Proxmox backups and stuff like that on it. And there's no chance that I actually have lost lost it. It's gotta be in here somewhere. I mean you see this place. This is actually good. It was even worse than this. So I don't have anything planned for here. Although, Josh, we should definitely check more into those Intel server boards because B House is getting crazy plot times on those that do not make sense. So, did Intel soup up those boards for government use is the question I've got. I don't know if they would do that or if they could do that, but like the times B House is getting for plots on those is insane. Like I mentioned, I do have a nut tool somewhere, but I cannot locate it at the moment, so I'm resorting to other tools to do nut. It's nice and professional whenever you do that. Oh, I can't wait till I get the discs in here and the discs in there. Oh my God. Very exciting. And I've got the KVM here also. It's not a new KVM, but I've been thinking about using this to actually connect to a kind of more advanced IP KVM, which are pretty cheap, the Avacense. And I just happen to have What's not cheap is the dongles, they're like PoE dongles, 
Those are not cheap at all. Uh, but I actually have a freakish amount of them left over from an old Avocent 2016 that I had, which I sold the Avocent 2016, but I did not sell the dongles with it. And so I might actually go ahead and use that, bring that back in, and then use this as the keyboard and monitor for it. I think you can do that and then control everything through that that is through the IKBM. So that's pretty cool. I guess I will wrap up here before too much longer. I've got networking still to do as far as the ladder. I have not figured out, or racetrack, or whatever you want to call it. I have not figured out how to branch this into here. I was thinking a 90 degree, like two inch piece of PVC might work, but There are problems with that. So I don't think this is actually a very good solution. So I probably am not gonna use this. Ah, uh, this thing is absolutely covered in bugs. Uh, hope that's, yeah, okay. Yeah, that. Uh, so that's not a very good solution. You're like running away. <laughs> not bugs. Uh, so that's not a very good solution because it's not got a lot of space up there to make a 90 degree. Uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. How I get the cables from the racetrack into the structured media without leaving the door open. So that's something if you've got any ideas on, definitely drop those in the comments. Tweet them at me. That's at GoSpacePort on Twitter. You can also hit me up on the Discord if you're in the Discord and let me know because, yeah, that right there, I don't really know. I do have more of the ladder, so I plan on using more of the ladder. And, like... Probably trying to span over like here. So like this, but this piece is like not quite long enough, I think. Something like that. This is like so close, but also just like an inch shy. So I don't know exactly what to say about that, other than I cut it and I shouldn't have cut it. <laughs> I cut it a long time ago for it when it was in the other spot and now I need it to add just a little bit more. I guess I could drill some holes here and then just mount this here and that would actually make up the difference. And then I can just, you know, have it come down through these two ports into here. And then from there, I can just break out the cables that go over there, the cables that come over here. Should be nice and tidy. I think this is gonna be, my goal is to have this be the best networking job I've ever done. I've got a low bar to make that happen. So it should be doable, um, I think. But definitely need to figure this out. Because this, really the only thing that needs to come over here is 40 gigabit, and if I'm willing to drill another hole in the ceiling, which, I mean, I'm going to be frank with you, I've drilled a lot of holes in the ceiling already, so why the fuck not? Um, if I'm willing to do that again, then I can run the PoE stuff just straight down into there, no big deal. So I probably should do that. That way, all I really have to do is run the fiber connections up to the rest of the house, and also the 40 gigabit fiber connection up to the rest of the house. That should be it. So I don't actually have tons of ethernet that I need to run through there. That's wrong, that's a lie. Each one of these ports has a CAT6 little connection and it's all ran into here. And it's all right there. So no, I do need to bring that over to there. Crap. So if you got ideas, let me know. I was thinking of cutting a hole, but that doesn't even really get it inside there. So I don't even know how to go about that. Um, questions? I have many. Errors? I have many. But we are having fun and we are learning together, possibly, and we're going to have like a killer home lab. There will be so many different various experiments on things. And my idea is if the electric is too much to subsidize some of that with, you know, some portion cashing out through Pohashing, which does direct to Fiat, 
with some small pool portion that I can just say, cash that out, put that directly to fiat, and have that pay off the electricity. That would be pretty cool. Um, to date, I haven't cashed out any Chia, but it also, if you go through pro hashing, avoids all the like crypto headache of you've got crypto payments and stuff because they just pay you fiat and they send you like a 1099 at the end of the year and it's just earnings on income. Uh, so that's really super straightforward and you know doesn't add additional work to my life. The chia I've farmed up till now, just holding that, and I think that I don't want to do anything with that aside from hold it. And I want to have a continued growing spot of it. So definitely want to figure out the wattage efficiency on these. A little bit scared. Uh, I also think it might not be that, that bad, but I'm a little bit scared, to be honest with you. All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up. I'm hungry. It's time. Uh, let's see. Anything else that came in here? Dan. Is that NetApp 6600? Dan, that is a NetApp DE6600 and D. You are correct, sir. I did Chia very early on, gave up as a network balloon, trying to catch up on what's new and how I found the chance. Yeah, uh, John, so, I mean, the, the earnings haven't drastically, I mean, they've gone down, but they've been in a kind of grabbing sideways uh, position for months and months as network has come down. So if we saw an irrational thing like we see with Bitcoin right now, where it's like all time highs on hash rate and yet the price is like a third down from highs, I would be super concerned. But Chia seems to have a very, very rational user base that are turning it off if it doesn't make sense to them. And I think there's a lot of spots where, you know, it is, if I believe the last estimation, 70 to 74 cents, somewhere around there uh, per kilowatt hour, which, I mean, I'm like a tenth, you know, almost of that. Uh, but there are places in the world where it's like that. So that is something to consider. If you have really high electricity rates, how you structure things becomes very important because energy efficiency of your operations, density of your operations becomes super critical. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it, everybody. I will check you guys out next time. Uh, yeah, and if you are a member on the channel, that is a $1.99 membership, 3% discount on shop.digitalspaceport.com. And if you are a different type of member, you get a 5% discount, and that is a $7.99 membership. And we do have more hard drives that I showed you guys, but those are you know, only a few of them come into the store, but there's a big, big batch coming later. And those are all 16s and 18s, and a freakish amount of them are SADs this time. I was finally able to get some SADs, so feel really good about that. All right, everybody, see you guys next time, and have a great rest of your day.